All right, what's going on guys? Thanks for stopping by my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at how you can display your work in your design portfolio. So these are gonna be some tips that I learned from my professors in design school and ways that you can potentially help yourself get a job in the future. One of the biggest things with presenting your design portfolio is explaining the intent behind your designs and explaining the reasons you're making your design. So that's kind of gonna be like the main focus of this video today. So what we're gonna be doing is jumping into my current portfolio and looking at my senior capstone project. Just so you have a little bit of background before we jump into looking at the project. Essentially what the idea is, is that a lot of people have a ton of old stock footage that they've shot in the past. You know, things of like offices or maybe medical footage or things that could be used, uh, you know, over and over again by a lot of different people. So the idea of this platform that I designed is basically to give people a place where they can exchange stock footage. So say you shot something of an office and maybe you need some medical footage, what you can do is trade through a token-based system and uh, exchange footage with each other in trade for digital currency. I think that kind of gives you like a general background and really what the project is about is not super important to this video, it's more just like, you know, about um, how to present your work. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so right now I'm on my portfolio website, johnbechtold.myportfolio.com, if you'd like to follow along and check out this page. And what we're going to do is just jump into Luna, my senior capstone project. So I think it's important to start off uh, your portfolio page with kind of like a hero image to draw people in and make them interested in looking at whatever product you're displaying. So I did a little spread here and have like a little bit of description of the project. Then what I did is I moved on to my overview section, and I think it's very important to start off giving people a general idea what the project is about. So I said, Luna is a microeconomy of freelancers exchanging stock material and services through a token-based system rather than with money. The intent was to save time and money through community collaboration. The next thing I moved on to was talking about the problem. It's also important to include right at the beginning the problem that you're trying to solve with your design work. When companies are looking to hire designers, they definitely uh, appreciate you know, having a good aesthetic sense, obviously, because we are designers and we make things look good. But beyond that, a lot of companies want to see that you're also a problem solver and you're not just designing with you know, no intent. Uh, you need to kind of lay out the problem that you're solving and why you're making what you're making. So then I think it's important to go into some goals, uh, kind of set out some guidelines that you set for yourself before you started this project. Uh, I don't necessarily think this right side of the page is totally necessary where you have client, role, and timeline, uh, but I do think it kind of gives it a more professional look. Even if it's just a student project, I think it's worth putting in there over to the right side. The next thing that we'll move on to is taking a look at my summary of my research that I did for this project. I think that research is extremely important in defining your problem statement and defining basically exactly why you created the product and how it's going to help fix people's problems. As designers, we deal with a vast variety of problems, and it's important to understand from the user's perspective what their issues are. So I think for this reason, doing interviews with experts in the field is very important and can ultimately lead to you designing a better and more functional product. So from those interviews, you can see I created some personas. So basically what I did is create an entry-level persona, somebody who is just kind of getting into video production, uh, and somebody who's more experienced in the field. I wanted this product to be of assistance to everybody in the filmmaking community, so I wanted to make sure that I hit a persona on either end of that spectrum. And then from there, I think it's important to talk about the insights that you gained from not only the interviews, but the personas that you developed, uh, which are basically a summary of the interviews that you did. So the next part of this is kind of going to be dependent on the type of product you're designing. Um, for me, I was designing a website. So domain models are important to talk about, but this could be other process work if you're doing maybe a physical product. It could be sketches of what you're drawing or what you intend on making at the end. Basically, it's important to show at the beginning of the portfolio that there was a lot of forethought put into uh, what you're designing. So here I basically talk about kind of what my architectural strategy was, how I wanted to lay out the information of the website. So moving on from here, we'll take a look at my wireframe. Again, this is specific to a UX and UI portfolio. So this might not apply directly to you. Uh, some examples of what you might want to put in place of this wireframe, if you're designing maybe a physical product, um, would be maybe like some 3D modeling that you did, maybe some foam carving, some things like that. But basically like you want to slowly show your design process and slowly unveil the final product. So design is really like kind of a game of storytelling in a lot of ways. Uh, and you need to be able to show your process from start to finish 
uh, so that employers can see the way that you think. So again, maybe wireframes aren't the thing that you're going to be showing in your portfolio. They definitely will be if you're doing a UX project or a UI project, but maybe they're not necessarily applicable to what you're doing, but you can put something else in place of this. Basically, you just want to show your thought process within a portfolio. So moving on from here, I added a visual direction section. Um, so I think it's important for any designer to establish a visual direction before they start actually designing their final product. Deciding on a visual direction will help you create guidelines for basically the project that you're making uh, and make sure that everything is kind of consistent throughout your product. So setting things like the font that you're going to use, the header size, the color scheme you plan on using, those are all very, very important to tackle early on in the design process. And it's not to say that you can't change them later down the line, but you do want to at least kind of have a thought of what you're going to be doing um, and definitely at least put that visual direction in your portfolio, even if you completely changed it from the beginning. I know actually I did uh, totally change my visual direction before I actually put it in my portfolio and I had to completely rework my design. Um, but regardless, it's important to show that you put a visual direction or I guess put thought into a visual direction before you actually created your final product. And then finally, we'll move on to the section where I added the final visual design. Again, these are web pages and they don't necessarily apply to every style of portfolio, but this is where you would basically put in your final product of whatever it is you're designing. So here I have all my final web pages and what I envisioned them looking like if they were to actually be coded. If you're designing a physical product, this would be where you'd kind of show your hero images of the product, uh, maybe the product actually in use, things like that. Then I also like to add a section of kind of what's next. You know, design is a process and design is never really finished. You can always improve on things in the past and I guess there's kind of two ways that you can look at that. One mindset of looking at that, I guess, is that, you know, um, you're never going to be done and it can kind of be stressful that, um, you know, you never actually finish a project. But on the other hand, you can look at it in a positive light in the sense that everything can always be improved upon. And that's kind of a good thing because it keeps you in a job. So I think that it's important to show even after, you know, you created your final product, you know, if I would have had more time to work on this project uh, and wasn't confined by these deadlines, maybe I could have done this, this, and this. And it's important to show that, you know, you're thinking ahead in the future of different things uh, you can do that could improve upon your project. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. This is how I personally choose to lay out my portfolio and uh, it's kind of based on some insight that I got from my professors and, and people I've interviewed with for different design positions. So this is how I choose to do it, but it's not necessarily like the only way to do it by any means. It's just based on my experience. So feel free if you have any critiques of this process, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And yeah, if you enjoy videos like this, it would be sweet if you'd subscribe to the channel and hang around for future content. And if this video helped you out in presenting your own portfolio, it would be awesome if you'd leave a like or even a comment below if you feel like it. Uh, and yeah, I guess I'll catch you guys in the next one.